She is an author who continues to capture the imagination of readers today with classics like Jane Eyre. Through personal correspondence, diaries, and even possessions like her shoes, Charlotte Bronte is celebrated at the National Portrait Gallery. Among the items on display are portraits of the famed author, as well as fellow writer and friends like Harriet Martineau and Elizabeth Gaskell. But perhaps one of the most popular and enduring pieces is the only known surviving portrait of Charlotte Bronte and her sisters, Emily and Anne. The story is remarkable. It came to us in 1914, having been on the top of a wardrobe for um, many years and found in a cottage in Ireland. And it uh, came through Charlotte Bronte's widower. It's a very haunting picture, isn't it? And because, as we can see today, but this would not have been quite as apparent as in 1914, but in the passing of time, there's emerged a figure in between the three sisters and um, it's, uh, if you look very carefully, it looks like a sort of white column, but beneath that is the clearly defined figure of a man, and it's Bramwell Bronte, the brother. We now know from scientific uh, analysis done on the painting here at the National Portrait Gallery that that column was added at the time that Bramwell painted it. So he must have felt that um, it didn't work well for the composition of the painting to have him in it, so he decided to paint himself out. When you think of Charlotte Bronte, immediately the idea of her published works like Jane Eyre come up, and of course um, the printed work essentially. She's famous around the world for Jane Eyre, and, and, and millions of copies have been sold. And, and here we are, and we're lucky to say in the National Portrait Gallery at the moment that we've been able to borrow the real thing, the original manuscripts from some of her writings and the contrast here between a, a wonderful poem and her journal. And if you look at the journal in particular, you can see this tiny, tiny script. So what can we glean from these bits and pieces about Charlotte Bronte? We have um, a journal which shows Charlotte Bronte struggling with writing and um, how she consults other writers like Harriet Martineau and Elizabeth Gaskell for their advice. And here she's asking about, oh, you know, when, when would be the best time to send the manuscript? You know, should it wait until a bit further down the line when she's nearly finished? So all the things that a writer goes through in terms of um, honing their craft. And also navigating her career, essentially. Absolutely. And of course, um, she was a pioneer as a, as a publisher and as a woman in a time which was dominated by male writers. So she was an extraordinary persistent writer and, and a business person, in a sense. One of the things in the collection that really caught my eye was when you see the Bronte sisters, all three, they've signed their names together, but it's not technically them. As you say, they are not the names of Anne, Emily and Charlotte. They are Ellis, Curra and Acton Bell. So of course it's male pseudonyms in a, a very, very uh, male dominated writing industry. That's what they decided to go with when they published their first book of poems. The exhibition is called Celebrating Charlotte Bronte and runs until the 14th of August. It's a chance to see the personal writing behind the published author and a rare look at Charlotte together with her sisters Emily and Anne. Jason Mansouret, TRT World, London.